to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, we're going to talk about variability, how variability in your process performance kills your engineering knowledge. Now we've talked about variability before from the point of view of what it does to your costs, how it will drive the lean wastes in your company, but let's talk about how variability kills engineering knowledge. Now this again is another lesson about why variability is the target not your root cause and things like that. Everybody's taught when they're solving a problem to solve for root cause when the first thing you should look at is the variability of performance. So in other words, you have a process and it does this. When the process is like this, we would say that process is in chaos it's not in a state of control and therefore we don't want to go solving for root cause the first thing you want to do is remove the variability now the the tale of this video is about if how a, the if you don't remove variability from your process it will completely screw up your engineering knowledge and it goes like this Imagine that this graph here is a reject rate. Okay, so, you know, higher is worse, lower the better. It's a reject rate graph. Now, typically when you've got a graph like this, when would the machine call for help? When would this process call for help? Well, typically, of course, they would have a tendency to call for help on the worst ever day. Okay, so they, they call for help and an engineer turns up. Now think about it for a second, the worst ever day, you've got a chaotic process. What this basically means is you have lots and lots of variables all pointing in one direction, the worst direction, and you're having an unlucky day at the office where all the variables are in their worst state. Now this is like picking up a handful of dice and you've rolled the dice and the dice has given you all high numbers. Let's say you had 10 variables and the dice has given you 10 high results and you get this wild peak here and you ask for help. Now think about it. Even if I do nothing as an engineer, the engineer turns up with his Allen keys in his hand, all full of enthusiasm, ready to fix the problem. Even if the engineer does nothing, what will happen tomorrow? Well, you'll pick up the variables again, wouldn't you? And you'll roll the variables. Well, what would happen if you roll those variables again? You'll get a different number. 
And because this is an extreme result, you're probably going to get a much better number. And that's if you do nothing. But of course, you don't do nothing, do you? As an engineer, you turn up. You whisper a magic spell over the machine. You clean it down and you talk nicely to it. And then what do you do? You look at the results the next day. And of course, the result has gone down. What does the engineer believe? Well, I did that. I shall be asking for a pay rise next time I see my boss. Look at that. I've got some skills. When do you call the engineer out again? Well, you call the engineer out again at the next peak, don't you? So they come out here. And what do they do? Well, they whisper the same magic spell and do the same sort of thing. And what happens? Bloody hell. This guy's like a, like a genius. Every time he lays hands on the machine, the machine just behaves itself. Now that the engineer becomes a process expert, look at the graph. Is that engineer really doing anything? Is that engineer really achieving anything? That process is just bouncing around randomly. That's variability. That's making the engineer think that he's brilliant at their job. Now, I'm not picking on engineers here because this was how I kept my job for 15 years. How about, um, let's have a think. How about the team leader? The team leader thinks that, um, the team leader thinks that it's the batch of material. We're buying cheap Chinese raw materials and that's the problem. So every time they get a peak, what do they do? Well, they change the raw material and the next day, what do they notice? They notice that the process gets better. So now they've got evidence that their pet theory is correct. But don't forget, the engineers got evidence that their pet theory is correct. Now, when you sit down the three process technicians, an engineer and a couple of team leaders, and you say, how do you solve this problem? Have you ever noticed that they've all got a different idea about how the process works? Now, don't forget, this is physics. This process should work the same for all of them, but they all believe they have the answer. They all have a pet theory and they've all got a graph that proves it. Variation. And by the way, every single one of them has a superstition. Not one of them is correct. Variation kills engineering knowledge because it gives you false signals it makes you think you've done something to the process because you get wild swings up and down here and if you've taken an action up at one of these peaks you're gonna believe you did that and therefore you're gonna get a superstition and when you sit your people down They've all got a different superstition, haven't they? Remove the variability. Control, how do you do this? You have to control inputs to the process. You have to have discipline to follow those controls. And if you do that, you will calm the variability down and then you can put the process on the target that you want it to be on. But if you leave variability in your process, it will kill your engineering knowledge and you are destined to fix the same problem over and over again and you will waste bucket loads of money. Get rid of variability.